Hey everyone, welcome back to another Betty's Lab video. First of all, a big thank you to everybody who's been so supportive. It's really motivating and it really keeps me going. Now to today's topic. And that is this expandable and collapsible bin. So when designing this basket, I didn't think it was actually going to be this tall. And therefore I will also include a model which has less of these bottom rings and will basically be a little shorter. And I can show you what it looks like. So this is what the shorter version would look like. And of course I can achieve this with this um, taller version. I can just collapse only the bottom part because you can just hold a specific ring that you want, then untwist the bottom ones, and then basically up to the ring that you hold will go back inwards, and then you have a smaller basket. So that still works. But of course it's more convenient whenever you grab the handle and then just pull and twist, and then this is gonna be your final size or the larger one, but that's more flexible because you can just collapse the bottom parts. Okay, now it's very important that you keep on watching because I will go, um, to the slicer in a bit and there I will explain exactly how you need to slice the model, tell you what kind of settings I use and also give you recommendations and show you what to do and what not to do. And after that I will be showing you the complete removal of all the supports in these um, L-shaped bits and also show you how to assemble the handle and how to glue the base. Because if you don't follow the steps, you might run into problems and then I get questions afterwards and I make these videos to try to answer all of the questions uh, up front. So let's go to the slicer. Okay, so we're in the slicer now and there are a couple of things which are really important. So first of all, it's really important that you disable supports. I already modeled in all the supports. And what I did is I made these lines slightly wider than 0.4. So you actually need a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in order to print this. And you should trick the slicer by disabling all features like print thin walls or uh, adjust flow. So the slicer has to treat this as a 0.4 millimeter line. And that's basically your aim. Same holes for these. They will all be printed as 0.4 millimeter lines. And I don't know what this weird artifact is right here that basically the lines are not there, but I've printed this and it's fine. So you can probably ignore that, at least in Cura. And also very important is that you tune the flow parameter correctly. So it's, it's important that you monitor your print the first couple of like six, seven layers in order to see if the walls that are being printed, that they don't come too close because if they come too close then your pin will not move and that's really important so we'll show an image on screen what it should look like and that you can clearly see the build plate in between those lines and therefore there is enough clearance um, use two wall lines it might be tempting to use plenty of wall lines so it will only be printing wall lines in this model but you actually want to have two wall lines and then have uh, some infill that goes like diagonally. And why you want that is because if you print um, only with concentric infill or with uh, plenty of walls, then the print will basically shrink in a very weird way. And that will basically make um, all the rings kind of being pulled towards each other and you will get weird artifacting. So make sure you use two wall lines and then the rest 100% infill. Also, your fan needs to be set to a 100% and this is because we have uh, bridging. Um, your temperature should be set to 200 degrees Celsius. And what you might want to consider is Z hops. And why you want to consider that is because if the print head moves from one side to the other, there are, are plenty of uh, locations of where the print head could actually get a bump and then lose steps. So if you know for sure that your machine is really strong and it never had such issue before, then of course, feel free to don't use Z-hops. Retraction is of course required. 
else you get a lot of stringing everywhere, but then uh, you might consider tree hops. Then for the speed, I print really slow because my print head is way too heavy for a type of motor that I use. And probably for you, this can be set to uh, quite a bit faster to uh, maybe like 60 or 50 uh, millimeters a second. Also, you can clearly see no raft, no uh, brim, only a skirt, which I basically use for priming. But this is basically all there is uh, to the print. So I will now show you the time lapse of the part being printed. And something really bad did happen. That was the power went out. And uh, therefore I had to manually adjust the G code uh, at the layer of which it failed. And then I could actually uh, recover the print. So I was really happy because as you can see, it took a long time to print. And I actually printed this three times because it failed uh, two times before. So enjoy the time lapse. So these are the outside modeled in supports and we can just break them off with our hands. And there's a little bit of a leftover, but I mean, you can uh, use a file to file that flat or I have a small exacto knife right here and you could cut it a little bit like this. I already removed the other side, so now it's time to fit the, uh, the printed handle to see if it fits. It actually does. So what we now have to do is we need to remove the other supports, also modeled in of course. And that will allow us to actually expand the entire uh, basket. And that will give us access to this hole. So now we cannot uh, tap this hole because we need to tap this hole with M3 thread. And then with a special 3D printed uh, uh, washer and a countersunk screw, we can uh, fix the handle in place. But as you can see, we have all these um, sections blocking the path and therefore we need to remove the supports first. What you can do best is basically insert the tweezers under here like this and just basically pry supports out. And then these sections, just wiggle them and pull them out. And that's basically it, now it's removed. And these sections here, are basically have one uh, 0 0.2 millimeter layer height clearance so they should be able to be wiggled free so now let's do another one so insert then kind of pry this out like this a little bit of clearance pry this out as well and you're done so for sections like these, where the supports are kind of welded too much into the part itself due to maybe a little bit of over, over extrusion, it's best to use the flush cutters to just snip them and then with the tweezers pry them out. Okay, so depending on how good you tuned your printer, there might be a little bit of still uh, material string between the rings. So in case you have uh, such a problem of course for the next one tune your printer better but you can use an exacto uh, knife in order to cut any strings loose maybe uh, you can use uh, a metal spudger or a flathead screwdriver to gently wiggle uh, the rings loose remove all the supports from the outer ring so with a little bit of wiggling we can now raise up the outer ring and that is exactly why this design is so nice. We have revealed uh, a new section of supports. So just like the uh, first supports, they're all the same of course. So you just insert something under here, break it off, then remove these as well. 
And of course, if you don't uh, get them out with the tweezers, you can use the exacto knife. Of course, be really careful not to cut yourself to cut loose the supports. Here you can see a small bit of support, but this is normally hidden under the next ring. So if you pull out the underlying ring in order to remove that part, uh, like the, the main part, there can always be a little bit of support uh, left under these things. Make sure you get all of it, else this rotation underneath here doesn't happen the correct way. So you want to make sure that this path is clear and also under here that all the supports are gone. And then repeat this process over and over again, removing the supports from each ring, working your way inwards. That's basically the thing. So I'll show you now a time lapse of me removing all the supports. Okay, with all the supports removed, with the means of flush cutters, prying with a screwdriver, tweezers, and an exacto knife, we have a clear path to tap our M3 holes. Um, maybe good practice, if this hole is not exactly 2.5 millimeters, it's wise to drill uh, first with 2.5 millimeter drill bit and then tap because this is uh, printed layer wise of course and if the hole is too small then this can sp split if you just ram the tap in. I've tapped the holes with the M3 thread and now we need a special washer with a countersunk in there. So you can add the bracket again, the carrying handle. And then you have this washer which is screw on here with the countersunk M3 screw. And this screw cannot be longer than 10 millimeters because else then uh, it will hit the uh, internal operation of the, of the collapsible bin. I have to note that these can be tightened all the way since the protruding part is uh, longer than the handle is actually wide and therefore this can just be screwed in place and then this can still rotate freely. So now the handle won't come off anymore. And the only thing we need to add is the base. And this is of course a very tall version and if you print the slightly uh, less tall version you will get a wider base. But the concept of the base is, uh, is the same. Now it's time to mount the base. And as you can see I let two of these sections protrude and that's because we're going to glue the base. So we have the base right here. And I'm actually going to grab a piece of cardboard. And what you want to do is ideally you want to uh, put some super glue. Oh, very small amount into this corner right here. Like so. And then, because this is protruding, None of the glue will actually get into the other parts. So you just place it on your super glue, let it rest, and that's it. And it will be super secure. So here we have the fully assembled collapsible bin. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something. And remember, just try to DIY.